now it's thinking and then we'll start. Is it going? Okay. Uh, this is uh, sorry. This is uh, Brian, and uh, we have been having this conversation in the Zoom chat room uh, for our open mic night. And Kit Ren has joined us, um, a good friend of the BRC. And so we are uh, so grateful that he is willing to share some readings with us, especially um, for our population that we uh, serve at the BRC. So Kit, I'm gonna toss it over to you, please. Um, thank you very much. I wanted to uh, read some works by uh, some uh, some poets who are who are or were queer, uh, just to highlight them and their contributions to the whole cultural thing. Uh, this is uh, translations by Adrian Rich from her most famous collection, Diving Into the Wreck. You show me the poems of some woman my age or younger, translated from your language. Certain words occur: enemy, oven sorrow, enough to let me know she's a woman of my time, obsessed with love, our subject. We've trained it like ivy to our walls, baked it like bread in our ovens, worn it like lead on our ankles, watched it through binoculars as if it were a helicopter bringing food to our famine or the satellite of a hostile power. I began to see that woman doing things, stirring rice, ironing a skirt, typing a manuscript till dawn, trying to make a call from a phone booth. The phone rings unanswered in a man's bedroom. She hears him telling someone else, never mind, she'll get tired. Hears him telling her story to her sister who becomes her enemy and will in, own time, in her own time light her own way to sorrow. Ignorant of the fact that this way of grief is shared unnecessary and political. And a more contemporary uh, poet is Ocean Vuong. And this is uh, Someday I'll Love Ocean Vuong after Frank O'Hara, after Roger Reeves. Ocean, don't be afraid. The end of the road is so far ahead, it is already behind us. Don't worry. Your father is only your father until one of you forgets. Like how the spine won't remember its wings no matter how many times our knees kiss the pavement. Ocean, are you listening? The most beautiful part of your body is wherever your mother's shadow falls. Here's the house with childhood whittled down to a single red tripwire. Don't worry, just call it horizon and you'll never reach it. Here's today, jump. I promise it's not a lifeboat. Here's the man whose arms are wide enough to gather your leaving. And here, the moment just after the lights go out, when you can still see the faint torch between his legs, how you use it again and again to find your own hands. You ask for a second chance and are given a mouth to empty into. Don't be afraid, the gunfire is only the sound of people trying to live a little longer. Ocean, ocean, get up. The most beautiful part of your body is where it's headed. And remember, loneliness is still time spent with the world. Here's the room with everyone in it. Your dead friends passing through you like wind through a wind chime. Here's a desk with the gimp leg and a brick to make it last, yes. Here's a room so warm and blood close, I swear you will wake and mistake these walls for skin. And, uh, one more uh, is from uh, the work of my personal favorite poet, Elizabeth Bishop, who uh, didn't write, who uh, dedicated her 1965 book uh, questions of travel to her lover, uh, Loda de Macedo Suarez. 
it all ended terribly, but before it did, we got some poems out of it. So, so that's nice. This is called Questions of Travel. There are too many waterfalls here. The crowded streams hurry too rapidly down to the sea and the pressure of so many clouds on the mountaintops makes them spill over to sides in soft slow motion, turning to waterfalls under our very eyes. For if those streaks, those mile long shiny tear stains aren't waterfalls yet in a quick age or so, as ages go here, they probably will be. But if the streams and clouds keep traveling, traveling, the mountains look like the hulls of capsized ships, slime hung and barnacled. Think of the long trip home. Should we have stayed at home and thought of here? Where should we be today? Is it right to be watching strangers in a play in this strangest of theaters? What childishness is it that while there's a breath of life in our bodies, we are determined to rush to see the sun the other way around? the tiniest green hummingbird in the world, to stare at some inexplicable old stonework, inexplicable and impenetrable, at any view, instantly seen and always, always delightful. Oh, must we dream our dreams and have them too? And have we room for one more folded sunset still quite warm? But surely it would have been a pity not to have seen the trees along this road really exaggerated in their beauty, not to have seen them gesturing like noble pantomimists robed in pink, not to have had to stop for gas and heard the sad two-noted wooded tune of disparate wooden clogs carelessly clacking over a grease-stained filling station floor. In another country, the clogs would all be tested. Each pair there would have identical pitch. A pity not to have heard the other less primitive music of the fat brown bird who sings above the broken gasoline pump in a bamboo church of Jesuit Baroque. Three towers, five silver crosses. Yes, a pity not to have pondered blurredly and inconclusively on what connection can exist for centuries between the crudest wooden footwear and careful and finicky, the whittled fantasies of wooden cages. Never to have studied history in the weak calligraphy of songbirds cages and never to have had to listen to rain, so much like politicians' speeches, two hours of unrelenting oratory, and then a sudden golden silence in which the traveler takes a notebook, writes, is it lack of imagination that makes us come to imagine places, not to stay at home? Or could Pascal have not been entirely right about just sitting quietly in one's room? Continent, city, country, society, the choice is never wide and never free. And here or there, no. Should we have stayed at home, wherever that may be? Very nice. Thank you so much. And that's a great reminder. I think, um, you know, when I was a kid, you, you wouldn't even be able to figure out that there were um, that there was art published by queer folk right and nowadays it's accessible and it's everywhere in their list we can look it up we can keep up with current and past of queer writings so it's a great opportunity for us and if anybody wants to um, get the uh, library downtown to get some of these books if there we don't already have them let me know i'm happy to go down with you and uh, request them i'm sure they would be happy to know that we were looking for them. And so thank you again, Kit, for those readings and for sharing, uh, inspiring us to be able to do some more uh, diving into some good art and literature. And for the rest of you, thanks for joining us and y'all have a good weekend.